up. I'm afraid it's me again, here again, and uh, I'm delighted to welcome you all. and delighted that uh, uh, we've got a nice letter here. This is flooded in. Dear Richard, my wife and I thoroughly enjoy Countdown and look forward to the programme every day. Apart from the mental stimulation of the game, it is your cheerful personality that brightens up our lives and makes us feel happy. Your programme is a ray of sunshine in an otherwise dull TV landscape. So thank you to all at Countdown. Uh, my wife and I are amused by your penchant for silk ties. I like them too, but my dear lady says they are impractical, too easily stained, and expensive to clean. I thought I would compose this little ditty on the subject, which I send herewith. Are you with me so far? Enjoying it so far? Yeah. Good. I'm just saying, I was just thinking, we make people happy because they look at you and I and realise how lucky they are. <laughs> <laughs> It may well be, but here we go. <laughs> and I've cut the first verse because actually, while this is quite good, it then loses the will, the will to go on in the last couple. You see, I think I think our viewers might understand okay, right. that. Yeah. Silk may well suit the rich and posh, and TV hosts with loads of dosh. But let us praise the smart investor who puts his faith in polyester. <laughs> 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 For when his tie gets stained with nosh, he just gives it to his wife to wash. <laughs> Well, I would do that. I mean, if I had a wife, I would wear polyester tie. But I haven't got a wife to give the nosh, the wash, the thing to. <laughs> but you're quite, you're quite right. Whenever I wear a silk tie, I could wear the silk tie the first time and I get stains down. I could wear it then every day for the rest of my life and never stain it again. It's always the first time you wear a silk tie, you get stained. it. Do you know that? You were talking just then about losing the will to live, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, at least we've brightened up his life. I should give him a name check. He's called Mr. Michael Sabin from, uh, from uh, Brentwood in Essex. Essex man. Essex man, you see. Just get we? on with the program. Okay, welcome <laughs> to champion Adrian Enrico and uh, ch challenger Matthew Jenkins. Adrian and Matthew. <laughs> well, Adrian, here he is. Charming the birds off the trees there, the old uh, man himself, 21 years old, student of Nottingham University, 69, 56 and a 47. It was very close at the end, wasn't it, with little Julie from yeah, the casualty well. department. It was very nearly a nasty accident as far as you were concerned. <laughs> but he's still there, well done, to the skin of his teeth. Now, Matthew Jenkins, welcome you from Portsmouth. He's single, he's 19 years of age, works as a data administrator for a financial institution. And he likes stand, uh, spending his weekends, would you believe, clubbing and listening to dance music. Right on. He also <laughs> says his favourite place is Amsterdam. So let's hope he avoids the double Dutch this afternoon and doesn't drift off into Never Netherland. <laughs> so good luck to young Matthew Jenkins. <laughs> now last time our G of the D triumphed with the six letter word owlish, owlish. Now, as we said at the time, this is very apposite, not because of his large specs, but because when he met his beautiful wife, he had the wit to woo her. <laughs> <laughs> so he's back again with OUP's Tanya Styles. It is, of course, Nigel Reese. <laughs> yes. And, you know, Tanya's husband did the same. And now, in private life, do you know what her name is? She's Mrs. Robinson. Oh. She really is. But she's true. too young for that sort of. Oh, she's too too yes. young for yes. that sort of stuff. Yes, <laughs> as far as we know. <laughs> right, there's the young men here, 21 and 19. It's a, it's a young man's game. It's countdown, I always say. Anyway, Adrian, here you go. Off you go. I'll start with the vowel, please, Carl. Thank you, Adrian. We start with A. And a second. E. And a consonant. M. And another. T. And another. R. And a consonant. S. And a vowel. I. And a consonant. T. And a final vowel. And E. Thank you. Counting down.
Okay, Adrian. Eight. Eight. Oh, right, eight. Uh, Matthew. Eight. Oh, so it could be good. Matthew. Steamia. Steamia. Well, excellent. Adrian. Steamia as well. Steamia. Yes, it's all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, well done, lads. Very good. Very good. Very good. There are other eight-letter words oh. there. There certainly are. Um, yes. Um, termites are there. Mm -hmm. Little termites. Yes. And, and mistreat. Also another eight. M i s t r e a t. That's right. Okay. Well, two other two other eight letter words yes. there. Said. Okay. Well, the men that count these two, they got their eight safely in the bag. Okay. Well done. Now, Matthew, over to you, sir. Uh, I'll have a consonant, please, Carol. Thank you, Matthew. R. And a vowel. U. A uh, consonant. D. And another one, please. G. And a vowel. A. And a vowel. Another vowel. I. Consonant. D. Consonant. S. And a vowel, please. And another one. Thank you, Matthew. That is O. Thank you. Counting down. Yes, uh, Adrian. Six as well. Okay, Adrian six. Sordid. Sordid. Matthew. Guards and guards. It's guards and sordid. And yeah. radius is also there for six. Good. Okay. Well, it seems to be that six is there, isn't it? That's that's as far as we can go here. So uh, fourteen and fourteen. Well done. Now then, Adrian, back to you for letters. Can I have a consonant, please, Carol? Thank you. L. And another. N. And a third. H. And a vowel. E. Uh, another vowel, please. A. And a consonant. P. And a consonant. R. A vowel. I. And a final consonant, please. And T. Thank you. 30 seconds and counting. Seven. Matthew, another seven? Seven. No, not seven. What's yours, uh, Matthew? Praline. Yes, praline. And panther. Oh, panther. Yes, that's a nice one. Panther. Yep, all there. Mm -hmm. Panther. It's good, that, isn't it? Lightning is striking, <laughs> even as we speak. I've just spotted an eight there, perianth, uh, which I think we've had before. It's a part of a flower. It is, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. good. Very good. Okay, um, well... That's the sort of thing you need to know if you're going to see it on Countdown, but we've got 21 and 21 here, uh, and doing very nicely, our chaps. Now, Matthew, your numbers, please. Now, you are a data processing operator, or executive, or whatever, so uh, <laughs> it's right to be right up your street, right? Hopefully. <laughs> I'll have two from the top and four of your choice, please. And four small ones. Okay, Matthew. The numbers, then, are two and eight, ten and one, 50 and 25. Oops, it's 75 very much now. With a low target, 158. Well, 158, everybody. 158.
Mighty Harry, 158 for Matthew. 158. Thought as much? 158. Yeah. Okay, for that big, huge build up I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> I expect you did this in about a couple of seconds, didn't you? Yeah. How did you do it? Uh, 2 plus 1 is 3. Yeah. Times the 50 is 150. Yeah. And then add the 8. Yeah. Right, 10 points. Okay, I'm settled in a benign mood there, I think. And you're obviously the same way. Exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. All right, so 10 points for both 31 and 31 it is. And now it's over to you, Nigel. Um, my memories of count uh, go back so far that I can remember the days when the concise Oxford Dictionary was the dictionary of, uh, of mandate on this programme, but now it's been replaced uh, by this one. It's now it's the new Oxford Dictionary, which uh, Tanya tells me is known in their business as Noddy. Uh, but I've been looking recently at some other dictionaries, and I wonder, Richard, whether if I give you the definitions from these other dictionaries, you can tell me what the words they describe are. <laughs> All right, this one is an orifice in an edifice for the intromission of illumination and ventilation. Ah, an orifice, uh, an orifice is an opening, an edifice is a building, so the light's a window. It's a window, well yeah. done. All right, now this is from the Collins English Dictionary. Good one, this. A boisterous dance involving the raising of alternate knees. Um, um, <laughs> I don't know. Not the, almost like the conga, but yes. the, I don't know. Uh, a knees up. A knees up. A knees up. A knees yes, up. As, as, in, as in a knees up. And uh, this is from Chambers Dictionary. This is a particularly delicious definition here. A cake long in shape but short in duration. Uh, long in shape. Swiss roll. Um, but short in duration. A uh, little Swiss roll. Uh, <laughs> Eccles uh, cake. Very near. Eccles eclair. Oh, eclair. So it's, it's rather yeah. odd to find in a dictionary these little jokey little definitions. Uh, and you know what eclair means in French, which is where it came from? No. Lightning. Ah. And I suppose the, the idea is that when you've had an eclair, it is so <laughs> delicious, it's as if you've been struck by <laughs> lightning. So there you go. Well, there you go. You say, uh, Nigel, you remember when we started, we had the Concise Oxford Dictionary indeed. Actually, I mean, you may remember, Nigel, Countdown has been running so long. Yes. But when we started, the alphabet only went up to H. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Only joking. End of part one. See you in part two. Thank you. OK, welcome back. Well, a battle royal between these two young chaps, 21-year-old uh, Adrian Denrico on 31 and 19-year-old Matthew Jenkins, as you can see, also on 31. So let the battle uh, <coughs> recommence with letters to be chosen by Matthew. Uh, consonant, please, Carol. Thank you. Y. And another one. W. And a vowel. E. And a consonant. C. A vowel. A. Consonant. S. Consonant. V. Vowel. E. And a consonant, please. And a consonant, thank you. And N. And the countdown starts now. Risky seven. Right, Adrian. Safe six. <laughs> uh, well, uh, safe six then. Seance. Um, Matthew. In caves. Well, we'll have to look that one up, won't we? In caves. In caves. Yeah, well, under what context, Matthew, could you How see this being used? Um, yeah. Within a cave. <laughs> yeah, I agree. If something's in a cave, it's in <laughs> caves. I agree. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not in the dictionary. So no, no. It might be in a cave, but it's not in the dictionary. It might be. <laughs> I, I thought you said N case, yes, which is there that. for six. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay, but seance then is uh, is in obviously there. Right. So he right. saw that. Um, what did you? What message did you get, Nigel? Uh, uh, also for six is uh, weaves, weaves, as in yes, yes. What do you mean, as in hair weave? Yes. <laughs> Don't you start? <laughs> Don't you give her ideas? She just thinks it's a wig. She doesn't know it's a hair weave. <laughs> <laughs> She's not into that yet. <laughs> Right, 37 and 31, I think. Yes, it is. Now, Adrian, let's have some letters. Can I start with a vowel, please, Carol? O. And another. I. 
and a third. U. And a consonant. Q. And a vowel. A. And a consonant. B. Another consonant. G. Another consonant. D. And final consonant, please. A consonant, sorry about that. And R. And the clock starts. Adrian. Just the five. Just the five. Now a chance for you here, Matthew. Five as well. Oh, right. The five, Matthew, is? Broad. Broad, yes, for five. Uh, Adrian? Radio. And what? Radio. Radio. Well, we love radio, of course, for five. We do love radio. <laughs> However many letters it's got in it, yes. But there is this extraordinary uh, six-letter word, um, G-R-O. It depends how you pronounce it. Jawa. Uh, which is a non-Muslim, especially a Christian, and it's spelt G-I-A-O-U-R. G-I-A-O-U-R. Jiao. Jiao. I think Byron mentions it in one of his programs. His, one of his poems. One of his programs. One of his programs. If Byron had been with us today, he would have had programs. <laughs> I feel sure of that. But G, the G-I-O-R, or the Jiao. Right, what, what are you looking at there, uh, Tanya? Jiao. Let's <laughs> have so a look at it. There it is. That is. Okay. A non-Muslim, especially Jawa. a Christian. If you yeah. could do the phonetics, you could tell me how to pronounce it. Jawa. Jawa. <laughs> Jawa. Right. Terry Thomas. You're an absolute Jawa. <laughs> <I'm pleased to laughs> <say. Yeah. laughs> okay. Um, 42 and 36, then, and it's now Matthew's letters. I'll have a consonant, please, Carol. T. And a vowel. E. And a consonant. M. And a consonant. N. A uh, vowel. O. Consonant. S. A uh, consonant. F. A uh, vowel. E. And a consonant, please. And L. OK, I'm starting the clock. Six. Six. Just tell us the four, Matthew. Most. <laughs> Most, yes. Well, uh, six we've got to. Fleet. Spell that. F-L-E-E-T-S. Fleets. Yep. Very good. Fleets in. Upon the high seas. Yes. Indeed, yes. Fleets. There is a, a seven-letter word. Uh, ferments. Uh, as in someone ferments rebellion. F-O-M-E-N-T-S. Beyond right. that, we cannot go. Nope. Good. OK, well, letters are done with now, actually. So it's 48 and 36, so it's just 12 behind, Matthew. You could pick them up, but it depends on the numbers. But Adrian, actually, is going to choose them. Can I have two large ones and any of the four, please, Carol? OK, thank you, Adrian. Right, the numbers are 4 and 5, 7 and 1, 25 and 75, who you don't see very much of at the moment, and the target is 512. Okay, 512, 512. Adrian. Five one three. 
Good man, Matthew. Five one three. Okay. Well, let's hear five one two with Adrian then. Uh, seven seventy five. Seven times seven. All right. Five two five. Uh, take away the twenty five. Five hundred. Um, oh, I've gone wrong again. Have you? Yep. Oh, have you? Yep. Okay. Well, you, you can uh, uh, read again, Matthew. What was yours? Five one three. Five one three. Uh, twenty five plus one. Is twenty six. Uh, five times four is twenty. Five times five. So, sorry, five times four is twenty. Plus yes. Seven. Multiply the two together. Yeah. Is five hundred and twenty. And minus the seven. Minus the seven. You still got that to play with. Yeah. Uh, five one three, which is what you declared. Yeah. Okay. Well, well yeah. done. That's, that, that's seven points. That's put you right back in the game. But could we've done this. Yeah. Uh, Seventy-five plus twenty-five plus one is one hundred and one. Multiply the whole lot by five. That's five hundred and five, and add on the seven. <laughs> five hundred and twenty. Okay. Well done. We'll just move on now, 48 and 42. So now suddenly the, the conundrum becomes crucial. So how about that? Things change. Funny old game countdown. 48, 43. Mm. Now come to the crucial conundrum. Put your finger on the buzzer. Everyone ready? Please now reveal today's crucial countdown conundrum. And the buzzer goes to say... Dignified. Dignified, he says. And he's absolutely... Right. Yes, he is. Yeah. Well, well, what a funny old game and there before your very eyes. It was even steam as a half time, but it looked as though Matthew had lost it, but then he came right back for 53 to 48. So the new champion, 19 year old Matthew Jenkins. <laughs> so we say, Edwin, what a. Uh, I don't know, if you'd have got that numbers game, you'd have yeah. been, even if you hadn't got the conundrum, which you didn't, you would have, you'd have been in the, in the chair still, but sadly we had three very good games with you, hope you've enjoyed it. Definitely you won a few hearts, so a few eyebrows are fluttering, not just in Nottingham, but in the, all the help countdown. And thank you very much, and the goodie bags of a good chap, Adrian Denrico. <laughs> well, that was a very quick conundrum, two seconds, uh, Jim Stewart, Jim, did you get the conundrum? No, I did not. No, well, there wasn't much time, was there? <laughs> Just those two seconds. Okay, well, we'll see Jim uh, from uh, West Kilbride tomorrow. We'll see you two tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Carol. And hopefully you'll all see me. Isn't that wonderful for you all? <laughs> so we'll, say, we'll see you then, one way or another. Good